So uh, good morning and hello everyone and uh, welcome to today's AVLSS session. Uh, so last time we have started with common source amplifier with NMOS diode connected load and here is my circuit diagram for that. Uh, M1 I have connected my input and M2 is the diode connected load meaning its gate terminal and its uh, drain terminal are sorted together. And if a diode, if, if a MOS transistor is diode connected, it will forcefully work in the saturation region. And also we have seen that M2 transistor does not suffer from body effect. That is, that is its uh, VBS is uh, or VSB is equal to zero. Whereas for M2 transistor, since the source terminal is not connected to ground, your VSB is not equal to zero. So M2 suffers from body effect in this case, right? And uh, I mean, uh, in your integrated circuit, your bulk or your substrate terminal is connected to ground. As you can see, uh, you know, visually over here that why VSB is not equal to zero for M2 transistor. Now uh, we want to find an expression for the small signal voltage gain that is V out upon V in. So what did we do over here? We split the two parts that is M1 and M2 and uh, we are finding the equivalent resistance seen between the source terminal of the M2 transistor, right? When its gate terminal and drain terminal are sorted together. So let's first find the impedance Rx seen into the source terminal of M2 first. Actually, we yesterday we did it, but let's revise it quickly. So for the NMOS load M2, the small signal equivalent circuit will be as follows. It will also contain the body effect in the form of GMB into VBS. So yeah, let's begin. So it's uh, remember for a gate terminal and the drain terminal are connected together. Fine. So here is my small single equivalent circuit. We put it inside the box and externally we applied a test source Vx and we passed the current Ix. So if you calculate Vx upon Ix, that will give us the value of Rx. Fine. So over here, uh, gate terminal, it's uh, connected to the drain terminal, which is connected to the ground because VDD will be zero for small signal analysis purpose. So gate terminal will be connected to uh, you know, ground and gate and drain are connected together. Fine. So actually here it should be S2, not S1. And uh, between gate and source, we have open circuit, just the voltage VGS2. Then we have GM2 over here into VGS2. Then we have a RO2 representing the output resistance and then GMB2 and VBS2 representing the body effect. Fine. And the drain terminal is also connected to the ground. So we have to analyze this. We will quickly see the steps again. So we can say that VGS2 is equal to minus of Vx. And uh, VGS2 is same as your VBS2. So VBS2 and VGS2 are same equal to minus Vx. Now what do we do is we apply the KCL at the source node. Actually here it should be source node, which will give us Ix is Ix plus Gn into VGS2 uh, to VBS2 and that will be equal to Vx upon RO2. Now why does this is the current flowing through RO2 is Vx upon RO2? Because as you can see over here, this source Vx is in parallel with the voltage, I mean the resistance RO2. Hence the current flowing through this resistor will be Vx upon RO2. Fine. So hence we write this KVL uh, that is sum of incoming currents is sum equal to sum of outgoing currents. So these are the sum of incoming currents and the outgoing current is Vx upon RO2. And now we plug in the values GS2 and VBS2. Uh, let me slightly increase the font now. Yeah. So uh, what do we do? What we were doing is we were plugging in the values of VGS2 and VBS2, right? As minus Vx. And we separate the terms of Vx and Ix, right? So what do we get? We get Ix is equal to Vx times Gm2 plus Gmb2 plus Vx upon RO2, correct? So here the same thing we can write it as Vx divided by 1 upon Gm2 plus Gmb2. It means the same plus Vx upon RO2. Now here the voltage Vx is same. So it's looking like 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2, which is equal to 1 upon R1 plus parallel to R2, right? So these two act as resistances, right? Where R1 is equal to 1 upon GM1, uh, GM2 plus GMB2, and R2 is nothing but your RO2. 
So what will be the result over here? The result will be that Ix will be equal to Vx times 1 divided by 1 upon Gm2 plus Gmb2 parallel to RO2, right? So it's looking like these two resistances are looking in parallel, which is nothing but your Rx. So Rx will be Vx upon Ix, which will be 1 upon Gm2 plus Gmb2, uh, the, the entire thing parallel to RO2. So that's the exact expression if lambda 2 is equal to 0. Now, if we consider RO2 very much greater compared to 1 upon uh, Gm2 plus Gmb2, then Rx can be approximately written as 1 upon Gm2 plus Gmb2. Fine. So, this becomes the approximate expression if lambda 2 is not equal to 0, right? And if lambda 2 is equal to 0, this becomes an exact expression. So, any, do any doubt so far in this? So, we have determined the Rx, that is the uh, you know, resistance seen into the source terminal of M2 transistor. So, up till here we have derived last time. So, let us proceed forward now. So, we have determined successfully the value of Rx looking into the source terminal when gate of an NMOS transistor when its gate and drain are tied together. Uh, so, what we can do over here is we can replace this diode connected load with the resistor Rx itself. Right? And we have already determined the expression of Rx, which is Rx is equal to 1 upon Gm2 plus Gmb2. So, we know uh, how to write the formula directly by inspection now for this such a circuit. Correct? So, here the formula will become, let me expand it slightly. Yeah. So, here the gain formula will become now Av is equal to minus Gm1 into RO1 parallel to Rx. We have written this many times by inspection. Now, if such a question is asked about deriving the small signal voltage gain, you can write this formula directly also by inspection. But we are also going by the longer technique, not a problem. We are going by the conventional technique, right? But I am saying if this derivation is asked, you can directly write this text, uh, write this gain formula uh, minus Gm1 into RO1 parallel to Rx. Yeah. Uh, if it is a resistive load, then you have to derive this. If it is the NMOS load or any other load, you can write this by inspection. Now, uh, let's solve it by uh, you know traditional approach, right? So this is the small signal model of the circuit considering Rx, right? So this we have done many times. So I'll run through the derivation. So over here we have V in equal to VGS1. We have RO1 Rx also into picture. So the current flowing through Rx will be V out upon Rx. Current flowing through RO1 will be V out upon RO1. And here we have Gm1 into Vgs1. Fine. Now, now we apply the uh, KCL at the drain 1 node. So all, our, all, our, uh, all the currents are outgoing currents. So we have Gm1 into Vgs1 plus V out upon RO1 plus V out upon Rx is equal to 0. Fine. And what is Vgs1 is nothing but V. So now we separate out the terms. And we found out that AV is nothing but minus Gm1 into RO1 parallel to Rx, which we have already found out by inspection, right? And uh, if I uh, wish to write it more generically, we will use the, you know, the more general form because Rx, we substituted it as equal to 1 upon Gm2 plus Gmb2, fine? We can use that. So your small single voltage gain for a common source amplifier but the NMOS diode connected load is given by the formula minus Gm1 into RO1 parallel to 1 upon Gm2 plus Gmb2. Okay. So that's the exact expression if, I mean, uh, actually here it is an approximate expression if lambda 1 is not equal to 0. Fine. Right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, we can say it, exact expression if lambda 1 is not equal to 0 and lambda 2 is you know, equal to 0, we can say that. Again, uh, if RO1 is very much higher compared to 1 upon Gm2 plus Gmb2, we can rewrite this formula approximately as, so minus Gm1 into 1 upon Gm2 plus Gmb2. So that becomes approximate expression if lambda 1 is non-zero, correct? And it becomes an exact expression if lambda 1 is equal to 0. So this equal to sign will come over here. If lambda 1 is equal to 0, there will be no RO1 term. Now, if we look carefully, uh, we can uh, take the Gm2 out and what do we get? 1 upon, uh, you know, Av will be minus Gm upon Gm2 into 1 upon 
1 plus gmb2 divided by gm2 now we have seen this before we have defined this term eta before what is eta gmb2 divided by gmb divided by gm okay so in this case eta will be uh, gmb2 divided by gm2 fine so hence we can write it successfully that av is equal to minus gm1 divided by gm2 into 1 upon 1 plus eta right where the gm expression is square root of twice mu and c ox w over l into id so uh, since we have two transistors m1 and m2 we will have different aspect ratios but the technological constant parameters will be same that is mu n and c ox will remain same and id1 will be different so av will be uh, you know minus square root of twice mu and c ox w over l uh, of 1 into id1 divided by square root of twice mu and c ox w by l of 2 into id2 the whole into 1 upon 1 plus eta now since id1 and id2 are same uh, for the nmos diode connected load and we can cancel out the terms 2 mu and c ox final formula for a common stage amplifier with a diode connected load is given by uh, av is approximately equal to um, minus of square root of w by l of 1 divided by square root of w by l of 2 into 1 upon 1 plus eta so please note down this formula if you have not noted down please note down this formula which is equation number 9.3.7 Okay, this eta term is arising because of the body effect for the M2 transistor. Now, there are some important observations from the equation. So, over here the gain is not a function of bias current. As you can see, gain is not dependent upon the bias current. So, that means your changes in the input and output levels does not affect the gain. So, that's a really, really big advantage because over here the amplifier becomes more linear. Now, the next point is the gain AV is not the function of input signal. So, here you see no V in term over here. So, that means as the input signal vary, your gain remains relatively constant. So, we get the input output characteristics relatively linear. So, that is again a big advantage. Now, your gain is directly proportional to the square root of transistor size ratios. Okay. So, uh, you know, there is a there are there are some drawbacks also that uh, a slight non-linearity is present due to body effect of M M2. That is, VSB is not equal to 0, right? In the form of eta. So, eta which is GMB2 divided by GM2 causes slight non-linearity. So, that is a drawback. Also, the gain reduces slightly due to body effect. So, let us say if eta was 0, then gain would have been, you know, higher value. Because the eta is present, the gain is slightly reduced. That is a disadvantage. Then the remedy is to use, uh, you know, uh, this uh, problem of body effect which we are facing. We can use a PMOS diode connected load to get it free from the body effect. Okay, the solution is to uh, eliminate this eta term, we will go for a PMOS diode connected load common source amplifier. Okay, before uh, proceeding ahead, let us see this formula again. We rewriting this formula, AV is equal to minus GM1 upon GM2 into 1 upon 1 plus eta. Now, GM expression is what? Twice ID divided by VGS minus VTH, right? So, your ID1 is different, VTH is different, VGS is different. So, over here, uh, but ID1 and ID2 are same, okay? So, the same formula can be rewritten as the small single voltage gain for a common source amplifier with a NMOS diode connected load can be written as minus of VGS2 minus VTH2 divided by VGS1 minus VTH1 into 1 upon 1 plus eta. Okay. So, that is the small signal voltage gain for a NMOS diode connected load. So, that is it for this small section uh, which we were spending in the last lecture. Any doubts anyone? You understood the entire flow? We, uh, we started with the circuit diagram of NMOS diode connected load and then we found out the value of Rx which was the resistance looking into the source terminal of M2 uh, keeping its gate and drain sorted. So, we found out the expression of Rx so which was approximately equal to 1 upon GM2 plus GMB2 and then what do we did is 
we replace that uh, you know the diode connected load m2 with a resistor rx over here like this just let me reduce it slightly yeah so now we directly can write the formula for av gain av in terms of minus gm1 into r1 parallel to rx correct so this is given just for the clarity but in exam you can directly uh, write this by observation so we uh, rewritten we have rewritten the formula of gain av and finally we got the exact exp i mean approximate expression for the small single voltage gain of a common source amplifier with a diode connected load and uh, we have mentioned few observations from the equation fine it is a more linear amplifier but slight non linearity is present because of eta value any questions anyone